just as we defined big theta of f of m as the set of all functions with the same order of growth as f of m, and just as we defined big O of f of m as the set of all functions with either the same or a smaller order of growth than f of m, we can define big omega of f of m as the set of all functions with a larger or the same order of growth as f of m. For example, the set big omega of n square is going to contain the function n square because n square has the same order of growth as n square. It's going to contain the function n cube because n cube has a larger order of growth than n square. Similarly, it's going to contain the function n to the power 4 plus 10 because this function has a larger order of growth than n square. So there are going to be an infinitely many uh, uh, number of functions here in this set as in case of the other two sets. Here's an example of a function that does not belong to this set which is not big omega of n square. 6n plus 100 is not big omega of n square. So let's try to um, let's try to get a feel for why 6n plus 100 is not big omega of n square. For 6n plus 100 to be big omega of n square, it must be the case that if we let's say plot 6n plus 100 in a graph then there must be some threshold point n0 beyond which that is when n becomes large enough it must be the case that there is, that there is some constant multiple of n square which bounds this line from below but no matter what no matter what value of C1 we choose, the, the cons, this constant multiple of n square, C1 n square, or all values of C1 is going to eventually cross this straight line and rise above it from, you know, beyond this point of intersection. So C1 times n square is always going to overtake 6n plus 100, no matter how small the value of C1 is. As long as C1 is greater than 0, it can never bound the, the straight line 6n plus 100 from below. Okay, so C1 times n square, it's, it's not possible for C1 times n square to be greater than or equal to 6n plus 100 for very large n. Why? Because for very large values of n, since C1 is positive, Again, if you bring 6n and 100 on the left hand side, we are going to have c1 times n square minus 6n minus 100. And this quadratic expression is, um, I'm sorry, it, it will never be the case that c1 times n square is less than or equal to 6n plus 100. c1 times n square can never be less than or equal to 6n plus 100 for very large n because for c1 times n square to be less than or equal to 6n plus 100, c1 times n square minus 6n minus 100 needs to be less than or equal to 0 for very large n. But we know that because this constant c1 is positive, again we are going to have an upward facing parabola as the graph for this function. And as you can see on the right side, as we increase the value of n, the value of the function is going to go on increasing indefinitely because these two uh, lower order terms are going to become insignificant relative to the value of this dominant term. So for very large values of n, the value of this function is going to approximate the value of the first term itself, which is the dominant term. And the dominant term is highly positive. So it's not possible for these two lower order terms to bring down the overall value of this expression to some negative number. And so that's why no matter what value of C1 you choose, 
we cannot bound c six n plus hundred from below by c one times n square, and so six n plus hundred does not belong to big omega of n square. On the other hand, if we if we take a function like n cube, n cube belongs to big omega of n square because n cube belongs to big omega of n square because there exists a constant c one such that there exists a positive constant c one. So if there exists a value a, a constant c one greater than zero such that n q is bounded from below. So n q is bounded from below by this constant multiple of n square. Now this is obviously going to be true under what conditions? So we can cancel n square here with n square here. So no matter what value of c1 we choose, because the values of n that we take are going to are tending towards infinity, this condition is always going to hold, no matter what the value of c1 is. As long as c1 is some constant, it can be a huge constant, but because n is literally tending towards infinity, we are going to have values of n larger than c1. And so, this is for very large values of n. N is obviously going to be greater than or equal to every constant that we can come up with. So, c1 times n square. If we plot n cube in in this graph, it's it's always going to be the case that no matter what, from what what value of c1 you take, c1 times n square. Is going to ultimately lag behind or fall below a function like n cube, and so n cube is always going to be bounded from below by c one times n square as n becomes large enough, and that's why n cube belongs to big omega of n square. Because n cube is bounded from below by a constant multiple of n square. Here's the formal definition of the set big omega of f of n. Again, this definition is completely analogous to uh, what we saw previously for big theta of f of n and big omega of f of n. So big, the set big omega of uh, uh, f of n. Just like the notations for big O and big theta, is the set of functions t of n such that there exists a constant c one greater than zero such that t n t of n is bounded from below by a constant multiple of f of n for large enough n. So, whenever t of n is bounded from below by a constant multiple of f of n. Beyond a certain value of n, that t of n is going to belong to this set omega of f of n. Uh, 